안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Uh, hi everyone. I see some familiar faces. I'm really happy. So yeah, this is CB Tapes playing. Uh, this is co curated by uh, Ed uh, Super Cheap and also Eon Studio, Lucian Shani Tiger here. And also myself from actually LA based and traveling to Seoul to make this happen. So this concept, what dreams may come, is really about the AI short film. As you can see, everyone's work actually uh, exhibiting not just main screen, also the individually uh, small blue, blue, uh, blue camera screen and left and right here too. And um, so I'm going to introduce myself. So who is this Jun K? Why, why should I know about this, <laughs> this artist? So um, I've been actually working as a, a physical artist for 10 years. So I was making like sculpture and installation. From, I'm actually coming from very uh, traditional, I guess, web to work. And um, a lot of my work is actually uh, fabric fabricated with a red thread. So I made a, like, a red thread sculpture and installation for 10 years. So using that name as my web 3 artist name. So a lot of people know me as a Jun K or either Jun Red Thread. So, so what is this red thread? Is um, we're all connected with uh, some invisible red thread, and then you can try to break it; it never breaks. It's more like an ancient Asian belief. So every time I start talk, I say that we're here for a reason. Like we're actually supposed to be here, and then we're already connected with the invisible red thread. So this is about human connection. Very similar to Web3 community building. So yeah, that's a little bit of story about Red Thread. What about you introduce yourself? Well, my name is uh, Chad Lugover. I go by CK Jamal. It's uh, something I learned about my own personal branding prior to even Web3, approaching myself and growing from a alias I used to go as an artist named my Neophyte. And that was an artist name kind of about self-exploration. It means novice. And it was the first time I actually was truly looking inward and kind of finding what I'd love to create. And I found that I love utilizing 3D, which I've been using ever since school. I've been using 3D for 17 years, and uh, the love for any of uh, like sacred geometry and projections, like Makala energy, and I actually start transcending that into um, 3D animations. That's kind of what got me into just exploring myself and creative. And I took that and I incorporated what was known as motion capture or BBP data, and then became FBX data. And um, yeah, so I expanded exploring that. And then prior to that, I was working in the animation industry while doing that on top of that. So I did a lot of work for like Cartoon Network, Network Aqua Teen Hunger Force back in the day, and all those previous 2D, 3D explorations and a lot of creativity and free time kind of led me to find myself and kind of push myself even further to where eventually for me, I was approached, I, I spoke about before, but I was approached by some headhunters for a creative director for Lady Gaga, and that's what brought me to LA. So ever since then, I knew that was where I was going to be, and I kind of came into the motion industry as an artist, and I found myself four years later starting from nothing, and then growing up in, in that industry, and becoming an executive creative director within six years. And that's kind of primarily what I'm doing now globally. And I just finished up that, and now my pursuit is now taking artists, kind of help artists in the motion industry that get lost in their own voices, because every project is so diverse, and I have so many artists and work with so many people that kind of approach a different project because every project is completely different. So look inward, find their voice, and kind of utilize Web3 as a space to speak their creative. Thank you. Thank you. So we actually met at the motion industry. As I mentioned, I've been working and making a traditional sculpture and installation, but I have a double life, which I have to support myself uh, for the living expenses. So I actually professionally worked as a motion art director for 10 years, plus 10 years. And um, a lot of top studio, like uh, Emmy Award in Imaginary Forces or like Elastic, so that's how I actually met um, professional, like, uh, Chadwick or Jack Fon, they're all like any uh, director that were doing a lot of tire sequence for uh, Hollywood blockbuster movies. So that was actually my uh, main like job resources. So I was very familiar with the digital action media. So that's why a lot of my uh, sculpture are based on 3D digital render. 
And when NFT started in 2021, I saw all my coworkers are doing super hard jobs and they're starting to make side income. So I was like, oh, let's do this. Like, what is this NFT? Maybe I can really like uh, uh, do something like maybe like combining digital and physical because the reason why I started my physical installation, I was always working computer like 24 hours. And then like days and night and weekend, I was like really like, okay, I just want to do like be active and outside and then maybe using my body and something doing more creative outside of computer screen. So that's why I started to make the installation. And it was really fun to see like really over films like size and size installation in room size or maybe sometimes museum, like really big space. It was a completely different experience from digital. But at the same time, I learned I had to consider delivery and shipping, organizing team of people, installing and deinstalling. So that was another challenging reading for me. So uh, moving into like metaverse or starting to make a 3D. So when NFT show up in 2020, back uh, back there, that I was like locked at and home like for almost one year <laughs> because uh, I wasn't able to go. Uh, outside because of COVID and I have a solo show waiting for me that I had one year to finish. So Web2 work is pretty slow so actually <laughs> properly making a room size installation they give uh, like six months to one year which Web3 words are very different like one month I feel like one year. A lot of things moving really fast. So back then I was like okay let's merge like digital and physical. So that's how I started to get into this world, world of digital. So plus physical and digital, I still feel like a little bit, um, people don't really like this word. <laughs> but I don't know what else is a perfect word besides hybrid art or something. I'm not really sure. It's not really marketed yet. And kind of Definitely. So I think, yeah, so that, that's where I try to find, okay, Let's make the installation in 3D. Let's put it in the metaverse to see where this goes. So that's how my first 3D rendered um, installation happened. And I made it on blockchain. It was really interesting. It was there for two years. I believe in myself. <laughs> and then I was like, somebody's going to know this is historical piece. And it's really funny because recently I had a show at Ihan Gallery. And there's a five French curator pushing my agenda, Pizzero, and it finally like got noticed <coughs> for uh, one of the biggest collector uh, in France, and his name is JMP. I call him just John, and then he actually bought my piece. I show uh, red thread installation, out outdoor specific installation vision for the uh, group show at Ihamel. It's funny because. <laughs> Just the Ihan Gallery director just walked in and I'm talking about Ihan Gallery. So she's from France, Avrida, amazing curator. She also helped that um, share my red dress story. So he actually collected my AR piece of installation, vision in, uh, uh, in nature. And after that, he checked out my other work for me to the blockchain for a long time. And he said, oh, this is really interesting. And then I heard that Avrida really helped out share my story, well, where this happened and why this is for, and then he felt this piece is very symbolic because it was my first piece. I was pushing a uh, physical installation as completely 3D render. I made uh, everything with a 3D and it finally uh, sold after minting a blockchain for a long time. So I understand a lot of people uh, have a little struggle as an artist and thinking and selling a lot of things that they have to really promoting and marketing. Um, I'm going into a lot of a little different um, conversation, but I wish was there next. <laughs> but AI art and then so my journey was like physical digital, a uh, physical installation artist, and then I was trying to survive as digital art director. So what about your AI though? Like yeah, and artist. combining with the 3D and now I'm pushing AI art. So now my journey is like really pushing AI art. So here I am on Common, sharing my story and my journey and also growth as an artist. 
It's awesome. Those green law. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Talking, speaking is what we're here for, you know. So everyone has a story, no matter what it is. Yeah. So I'm curious, because you were a professional 3D director, or using 3D for plus 17 years. What, what, why do you, why are you interested in AI art and then why are you combining and mixing? What do you see from AI art? Um, for me, I mean, AI kind of came naturally. I've only been using AI for three years, but for once I realized like how much control I actually have with AI, I kind of like actually realized and just saw it as like another medium, another form, or something I can kind of adapt. And this is why if you look into the back uh, installation we had here that's showing at the Coex as well, that was the first project after understanding AI now for three three years and working actually partnering up with a human who created stable form was actually for the first time able to inject into a pipeline. So that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to kind of take you know, everyone works with what they know, they talk about what they know, they come from what they know, and that's our experiences. My experience had to be 3D, so I actually wanted to find a way to kind of bridge that gap in between motion and what's going on with the Web3 community. Because in the motion community, obviously the VFX community, etc., the AI is being frowned upon because of particular reasons. So if you find a way to actually creatively utilize it without guidelines, laws, copyright issues, and use it as a medium as a tool, that's kind of literally what motivated me. So most of my pieces, like the Dremel is what's showing this here, is kind of rendered from 3D frames taken to AI animation, et cetera. And so I just want to explore all that and kind of have that creative control. That's really cool. Um, I think when he say installation, we actually have a back room. We call that Sorry, the network room. Network room or lounge room. Okay. So we are actually showcasing group project there too. It's a combining 3D and AI, very innovative process. We experimented, and that will probably gonna share. We'll talk about that yeah, later. later. Yeah. But there's a lot of coding involved. And yeah. So the ones and nerd stuff. You probably mix everything I put 3D coding, AI, <laughs> or yeah, everything. Brain and AI. But I mean, I think where the AI is going is definitely on that. I mean, it's it's there in many ways. I mean, I just watched a preview on an app where I can take footage and now I put the, the street was raining, I can turn that street into snow. I can make it sunny, you know, and it's already there. It's definitely like in the footage where eventually everyone's going to have their own pretty voice, everyone's going to be the brand. Everyone's going to have their story to tell. Everyone's going to be a personal director. If they choose to be, you know, you'll have the capacity. And that's where the technology is heading. And I think we're going to be seeing more stories, and more just different aspects of the entertainment sector kind of really break down. And everyone will kind of start, just again, start telling their stories on their own channels, et cetera. I mean, definitely. it's definitely growing. And it's at an exponential rate. It's going to grow faster than we realize, I believe. So, I mean, everybody thinks on the same page. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, thank you. I think this show is very special because Agreed. everything you see is AI. We call that our AI short film. Very, very, very early in stage where kind of everyone here to kind of like at the beginning stage of how AI or what's what's really coming and what is really biggest possibility. Now people are trying to make a film with AI. So this is actually really big conversation that we're pushing. I the curations out of everything I've seen so far, and I mean, it's like all I've been to like New York, LA, and then here so far for seeing AI actually out in the field. This has been one of the strongest curations I personally have seen. That's cool. And it's an amazing collective. And I, I talk to a lot of the artists and friends with all the artists in Web3 as well, and I know their passion to produce the best content and really like just get their voices out there as well. And I think what's happening here right now is definitely forward thinking for most of the things I've seen. So I'm really hope we'll be part of it. Yeah, I think we should uh, uh, talk about why AI art, right, what is for, uh, what, what is the meaning for us, and what is uh, AI art for us, and then maybe we can. Yeah, we can wrap it. I mean, yeah. one thing I've been experimenting was uh, using Chat GPT to understand like what is spirituality. So mostly, what I promote for myself is uh, I had a show here last year based on Korean um, shamanism. I'm really an advocate of like understanding cultural shamanism. So I, I tapped into Korean mythology, and that was my base. And if you would have thought out of the extent of my career that Korean mythology and shamanism and pre Buddhism would have blew me up internationally, I would have never guessed it. But that's I believe in that project, and I'm really an advocate of AI for that project. But having chat, you can understand what spirituality is, has been quite the task. And now having understanding, like having chat, you understand like brutalism architecture with pre Shila design and actually maybe with some Japanese style and what does that mean and then what is actually 
just regional Mongolian shamanism look like compared to like early Northern Green or Southern Green shamanism. It's just like the, the, you'll get Nigerian, you can get you'll get Irish women that you just, it just can't adapt to that yet when you understand and try to teach it to prompt. And I think that's really exciting to understand, even though it's based on a data set. But in that data set, there is something there that will eventually resonate in the spiritual format. So you have to keep programming and keep working with it. And that's what I'm trying to have it understand. So I think that's an aspect of that human quality that we all have within us. And I just think, like, for me as a creative, that's kind of what I'm trying to understand for AI. Mm -hmm. You know, probably anyone else here may not think that. <laughs> it's <laughs> cool. It's just what we try and put in ourselves and try to push it. Yeah, I think definitely AI art is meaning, I think it means different from every artist. But for me, I don't think anybody will deny AI art is sort of like a crazy like potential vehicle that you can push your vision in a very like short amount of time. So for example, I was just like uh, talking about for traditional work, I experienced for one year to prepare the installation. And I started to push my vision with the AI art. It comes with sometimes a second if I do really articulate my vision with the prompting. So like I started to show my vision with AI art, which is size out, outdoor site specific installation in nature. So it's happening for season. So I wanted to show something that technology don't I, it can show it, it cannot show yet, which is like those kind of four season and natures and we can still we cannot still make those kind of like smells and temperature and lighting and all these like feelings and I feel like those those areas are still like where like I think that's the holodeck. <laughs> <laughs> Literally like that's where yeah I can definitely be Yeah, so I feel like I there know. should be some um AI art that I think for me is a just really great tool and assistant I found. And I believe everyone will agree on that part. And AI art been helping a lot to kind of like express my imagination that think about if I actually build a public art in nature. I, I think it might take more than maybe one year, maybe like two to three years, I'm not really sure. So I think just seeing my vision through AI, it's for, it's for, yeah, inspiration, it's already uh, actually innovation. But yeah, so that's that's for me, that's, that's really working. And I think for this exhibit, you can see everybody's like a vision. It's so different, so diverse. And uh, yeah, so please check out the whole show in a maybe like in big context of this merging era or Web2 or Web3 or maybe pushing AI art agenda and then you can kind of see this one piece in a, in a bigger context. What, what are we trying to do and then what are these artists are trying to experiment? It will be really more fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for our battle.